Well lads, what is the crack and welcome to Premier League predictions for match week 5 and well looking at how we both did last time out of course, I needed a big response last time out and that's exactly what I did get, 8 points out of 28 scored in this one um, from the past match week and well I also got 3 correct predictions then being Palace 2, Leicester 2, Fulham 1, West Ham 1 and Man City 2, Brantford 1, 3, very good predictions there in my opinion there, well you lads of course only managed to score 4 points out of 20, 0 correct predictions because nobody put in their uh, predictions uh, in the comments so again lads if you want to fully participate in this prediction series make sure to not only vote in the polls every single week but also comment down below right now lads your predictions for this match week here they will definitely count so as things overall are currently standing you still have got 22 points however I am steaming ahead with 30 points to my name so I mean lads you just need to up your game a wee bit now and well Daphne is going to get interesting in this match week so I'm excited for the return of Premier League football once again this weekend and I hope you all are too and if you are which I'm sure you you are make sure you are subscribed if you haven't done so already as currently 80 percent of you here are watching this video still have not subscribed so if you are a new viewer and you're enjoying all my content make sure you do subscribe also make sure to like the video to really help and support the channel also make sure to click the bell so you never miss one of my latest uploads so then let's get into this Premier league predictions for match break five and um, well what a way to kick start match week 5 then we've got a London derby as the early kick off here it is West Ham United hosting Chelsea at the London Stadium and well West Ham of course as I did mention in the intro did draw 1-1 away against Fulham there last minute equaliser by Danny Ng sealing a point there and that one there for the Hammers so again like West Ham still haven't been too convincing so far this year maybe that is the case of you know all the new signings haven't yet gelled together and well it will be interesting to see how West Ham will be looking when all them new signings do gel together whereas Chelsea of course last him out did get a narrow 1-0 victory there away against Bournemouth last him out so they're looking all right so far this season and once again lads it is still hard to know here Chelsea very easily could win this game or let me tell you what lads their record at the London Stadium as of recently has been quite poor as well so West Ham could still easily win this game here as well this game definitely can go either way and well of course the Sandals go never back the early kickoff either anything can happen in the early kickoff you know what lads it's going to be a fantastic game of football here a real proper London derby I'm going to say in this one but I'm going to go down the middle here it's going to be an extremely entertaining 2 all draw here at the London Stadium I'm going to go with I'm going to say 1-0 at half time to the Hammers in this one I'm going to say with about half an hour gone in the match that the Greek centre-back Konstantinos Mavropanos will score a bullet header in past Robert Sanchez he had a very good um, game against Bournemouth last time out and well it will be 1-0 to West Ham at half time thanks to that bullet header from the Greek centre-back however then in the second half I'm going to say Chelsea will come out all guns ablaze in 10 minutes gone I'm going to say Nani Madueke will equalise here in this one and with about 15 minutes left in the match then Jadon Sancho a player who looked fantastic in his first game for Chelsea coming off the bench he will score the what looked to be the winning goal here in this one putting Chelsea 2-1 up then with about 15 or so minutes left in the match however I'm going to say West Ham will do what they did last week and they will come back right at the death here in this one in injury time I'm going to say Crescencio Somerville will manage to get a last minute equaliser here in this one saving what is going to be a massive point here in the end for Jadon Lopetegui we say so West Ham 2 Chelsea 2 is what I've gone with here in this London derby Chelsea probably will be the better side in my opinion but I do believe here lads West Ham will be clinical and will just about manage to salvage a point here from this one in this London derby as we head now to Villa Park for a Midlands derby it is Aston Villa hosting Wolves and well Aston Villa of course it's been an amazing past week for them of course you know coming from 2-0 down to defeat Everton 3-2 last time out there at Villa Park thanks to a, a screamer from John Durant to win that game there really and well they follow that up then by opening up their Champions League campaign with an extremely comfortable 3-0 victory in Switzerland away against Young Boys should have been 5-0 if it wasn't for the disliked goals but still what a world class performance there by Aston Villa in the Champions League midweek Wolves on the other hand of of course you know the heartbreakingly loss 2-1 at home to Newcastle there thanks to two unbelievable goals scored by the Magpies there and followed up then by getting knocked out of the car by Cup midweek losing 3-2 at the Amex Stadium away against Brighton of course so yes lads here in this one Wolves haven't looked great so far this season Aston Villa though are looking like a world class side it's going to be an extremely comfortable and easy 2-0 victory here I'm going to say for Aston Villa at home to their Midlands rivals I'm going to say it will be 1-0 going into half time although it's that goal is at half time actually but early on in the second half have Ollie Watkins will manage to make it 1 0 here at Aston Villa with the lead then getting doubled by John McGinn. John McGinn not too long after that, then in this one. Watkins and McGinn with the goals here in this one. Wolves once again will look quite poor, in my opinion. And Aston Villa will continue what has been a fantastic run of form then for Unai Emery's side. So Aston Villa 2, Wolves nil is what I've gone with here in this Midlands derby.
Moving on now to Craven Cottage, we have got Fulham hosting Newcastle United and of course as I just mentioned, Newcastle just about winning 2-1 last time out away against Wolves there thanks to two unbelievable screamers from Fabian Schaar and Harvey Barnes there. So I mean once again Newcastle maybe aren't looking too great but still they are definitely scoring some amazing goals so far this season and they are just about seeming to get over the line in a few games as well. So it's going to be interesting to see what does happen here. Fulham of course and fantastic there to get a draw against West Ham, probably should have won the game as well there but it is what it is though they still will be happy enough I do suppose with the point but then again will be unhappy they couldn't just hold out for just a, just a, even less than a minute longer in that game like but I mean Craven Cottage here so far is looking like a bit of a fortress so far for Fulham and while I do believe lads in Newcastle's current form they are looking unconvincing they definitely very well could be this definitely very well could be a banana peel in the way for Newcastle and it's going to be interesting to see how Newcastle do combat that possible banana peel it's going to be a low scoring game lads but it's going to be an extremely tight game in that as well but Newcastle, of course, you know, they do have a decent enough defence there. I mean, I'm not too sure, actually, what to expect from this game here in this one. Um, but you know what, lads? I'm going to send Newcastle just scrape it here in this one. It's going to be an extremely narrow 1-0 victory here away from home. Bruno Guimaraes will score the only goal of the game here in this one. But, the lads, this game is going to be incredibly tight to call here. Fulham will play fantastic here. They'll probably be the better side as well here in this one. But Newcastle will get the goal here in this one. And, well, after a very, very hectic, shaky 90 minutes of football, I'm going to send Newcastle will we'll be thankful to escape Craven Cottage with all three points and tackling this one so Fulham nil Newcastle 1 it's going to be an extremely tight affair with Newcastle just about taking all three points but at that point it will not do Fulham's good performance too much of a justice here in this one as we now go to the King Power Stadium, it is Leicester City hosting the Toffees Everton. And well, Everton lads, they are just in terrible form, of course. Back to back games in the Premier League where they've been 2 0 down and lost both of them 3 2. And well, they followed that up then, of course, by getting knocked out of the Carabao Cup, drawing 1 1 at home to Southampton and losing 6 5 in penalties then at Goodison Park. Ashley Young, of course, having his penalty save off the post as well there to send the Saints through to the next round of the Carabao Cup. And well, Leicester City, of course, you know, still 2 all draw away against Crystal Palace still is a decent enough result there but still you know if they hadn't given away that penalty it was looking very likely the Foxes would be taking all three points there from that one at Sellers Park but lads this is definitely a massive opportunity for the Foxes to take their first three points of the season here and they cannot let this one get away from them here and you know what lads here although Everton definitely very well could see this game as possibly being the one where they can get back on track here and I definitely very well could see it as well if Everton were to play quite good and maintain that good run of form in this game Again. Unfortunately, here for Everton lads, I'm going to say the same problems are going to be recurring here. Last year, play a much more exciting and better brand of football, and it's going to be a very narrow 2 1 victory here. I'm going to say for the Foxes here at home to the Toffees. But Everton will do what they do best, and they will open the scoring here in this one, and will be 1 0 ahead going into half time. The only goal of the first half will be scored by Eliman and Jay. I do believe he will score his first goal of the season, his first goal as an Everton player, I do believe as well. Maybe he scored in the Carabao Cup at one stage, but I do believe his first. Premier League goal nonetheless anyway and while Everton will be going into half time one nil ahead however then as I said they're going to do what they're going to do best and they will bottle it here and that's fun very early on in the second half Jamie Vardy will manage to make it two goals in two games equalising here in this one making it 1-1 one, one. and with 10 minutes going in the match then I'm going to say the Foxes will get their winner through the centre back Ocoli I do believe he might be Italian but I do believe that's a bullet header from a corner we'll see Leicester win this one in the end here it's once again going to be a terrible bottle job from the toppies here in this one but it will be a crucial first three points of the season then for Leicester City so Leicester City 2, Everton 1 is what I've gone with here. I tell you what, lads, a massive opportunity for Leicester to win this game. Which, and well, once again, lads, I definitely very well can very well see Everton once again taking the lead and doing what they do best and bottle it in this one. Moving on to Anfield now next, we've got Liverpool hosting Bournemouth then in this one. Now, of course, Liverpool, last time out of Anfield, a narrow 1-0 defeat at home to Nottingham Forest. The first time that's happened since, I think, 1985 was the date. Like, so, definitely not a good start there or a record at all there for this current Liverpool team to hold. But, of course, you know, they did bounce back with an extremely comfortable 3-1 victory away at the San Siro against AC Milan last time out. Whereas Bournemouth, of course, you know, will definitely feel hard done by not to at least get a point out of that last game at home 
home to Chelsea their last time out of course missed the penalty in that game as well there so I tell you what lads definitely Bournemouth will need a big bounce back here in this one they usually do struggle at Anfield though which definitely won't help them whatsoever however they may very well take some inspiration off that fantastic 1-0 win there for Nottingham Forest last time out and saying we definitely very well can get a result here in this one and what I do believe at times here Bournemouth definitely will be playing good football and they will be asking Liverpool questions here in this one but I do believe lads that win at the San Siro definitely is going to do this Liverpool team a lot of good and while it won't be too comfortable I still will be a win nonetheless here in this one I'm going to say here finishes Liverpool 2 Bournemouth 1 here at Anfield I'm going to say at half time it will be 1-1 in this game I do believe Liverpool will take the lead through Diogo Jada after about 20 minutes however about 10 or so minutes after that goal 10 or 15 minutes after that goal we'll say Antoine Semenya will equalise here in this one and the Cherries will be going into half time with the, with the score level at 1-1 however then in the second half I do believe Liverpool will pile on the pressure and with about 15 minutes left in the match after an irritating game overall Mohamed Salah will win Liverpool the game here in this one and while well, Liverpool will once again avoid another banana peel which is another side like the Nottingham Forest in Bournemouth this time so Liverpool 2 Bournemouth 1 uh, Bournemouth won't be too bad whatsoever but Liverpool will learn from their mistakes from last week and should definitely get a big 3 points then at home to Areola's Cherries as we head now to the St Mary Stadium, we've got Southampton hosting the Tractor Boys, Ipswich Town. And well, of course, you know, Southampton last time out lost 3-0 at home to United there. The first 30 minutes for Southampton, though, fair enough, they were quite good. But after United had scored the first goal and after Cameron Archer's missed penalty, it all went downhill from there. Southampton didn't even have a shot after that penalty missed, like so. I tell you what, lads, Southampton, for the most part in that game, still weren't good enough there in that one. And well, they will be missing Jack Stevens, their captain in this game as well, three red cards. So it's going going to be interesting to see how the defences adapt with that loss whereas Ipswich Town of course last time out did get a massive nil-nil draw away against Brighton last time out there a fantastic defensive display there by the Tractor Boys and while this has to be a must-win game for both these newly promoted sides both sides still hunting their first wins of the season and while it has to be this game for both of them a draw isn't good enough for either side it has to be a win for one of these sides here the team who I'm going to say will get the win here in this one is going to be Ipswich Town. I'm going to say the away side lads will do it and well they, of course they won this uh, fixture 1-0 last time out last uh, last season there in the championship. I'm going to say they do it once again here in this one. It's going to be a fantastic display and a 3-1 victory I'm going to say for the away side here at the St Mary Stadium. It's going to be 1-1 at half time. Omari Hutchinson, the only player to score in this fixture last season will score in this fixture again. He'll get his first Premier League goal and he'll make a 1-0 end of the Tractor Boys here in this one. However, I do believe that Southampton will be going to the half time with the score at level I'm going to say the youngster Dibbling who was fantastic I must say in the first 30 minutes against United with the youngster will manage to score his first Premier League goal as well and his first goal for Southampton and well it'll be 1-1 then going in the half time a very handsome pair for sure here at the St Mary Stadium but I do believe that Ipswich character will shine through then in the second half I'm going to say that Liam Delap will score his second Premier League goal to make a 2-1 here in this game with the win now with about 5 minutes left in the match being sealed by Super Sub Connor Chaplin I do believe lads here Southampton like they did against United are going to fade here in the second half and while Ipswich definitely will be the very well deserved team to take all three points in this one in this massive possible uh, relegation six pointer as well so Southampton 1 Ipswich 3 is what I've gone with here at St Mary Stadium Ipswich will be much more clinical it'll be a better team as well Southampton will be a good first half but a poor second half and a well deserved three points in my opinion in this one for Kieran McKenna's Tractor Boys as we head now to North London, we have got Tottenham hosting Bradford here in another London derby, I guess you could say. And while, of course, Tottenham last time out, of course, in the Premier League, they were playing in the North London derby here and would lose gnarly 1-0 at home to their big rivals in the Gunners and Arsenal. And while Arsenal, of course, did score the goal in that game, but the Tottenham deserve even a point out of that game. If I'm going to be honest, lads, I don't think so, because, I mean, Tottenham weren't too great in that game whatsoever. Sure, they created one or two good chances, but especially in the second half as well, and especially after Arsenal did take the lead... Uh, uh, Tottenham disappeared really and well they weren't good enough there in that game overall and well they were terrible I do believe midweek in the Carabao Cup as well and only narrowly managed to undeservingly I guess you could say as well they win uh, 2-1 away against Coventry City there in the Carabao Cup thanks to two late goals by Jed Spence and Brandon Johnson there so at the moment lads things aren't looking too great for Tottenham whereas Brantford of course you know should definitely be looking at this fixture and saying we can definitely make a crack out of this and definitely get at the very least a point out of this one as well because they only narrowly lost 2-1 away against Man City their last time and took the lead 
within the first, I think, 21 seconds in the game as well there. But the player who did score that goal after 21 seconds, Johan Vesa, is out to the end of November. So that was a massive loss there, for sure there. So, I mean, that definitely is a big loss, especially in terms of goal scoring as well. Although still, Brantford have had a, have had a fantastic start to the season. But Tottenham and Trasicogli will be demanding a massive response after two poor performances in a row. And I do believe that Tottenham are going to play good here in this one. Andrew's men are going to uh, provide that good response here in this one. And I'm going to say the loss of base will be too much as well for Brantford. They won't really get up to too much when going forward. The base in this one. And I'm going to say it will be a relatively comfortable 2 0 victory here for Tottenham at home to Brantford in this one. Both goals will come in the first half through Brandon Johnson, I do believe, the player who did score the winning goal there late on away against Coventry midweek, will score the opening goal here in this one, the Welshman, to make a 1 0. And then Dominic Solanke will score his first goal as a Tottenham player to make a 2 0 here in this one. I'm going to say nothing much will happen in this game, but Tottenham will defend quite well in this one. And I do believe that it probably will be a deserved win. They, they will also be clinical, they will score the goals up top as well. And what I do believe that is Tottenham will be, will be the deserved team here in this one. They take all three points from this one. So Tottenham 2, Brantford 0, as we'll have gone with here then at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Now on to the late kickoff on Saturday. We go to Sellers Park. It is Crystal Palace hosting Man United then. And well, of course, United, it's been a dream past week for us, of course, following up that massive 3-0 victory away against Southampton last time out with a massive 7-0 victory at home to Barnsley, which still is quite something to fathom there for sure. And once again, I get it. It's only Barnsley, like, but still, to score seven goals in the game, definitely a special there. And it does show, in terms of going forward and in terms of scoring goals, this United team definitely is coming on. Whereas Crystal Palace, of course, you know, they draw 2-2 at home to Leicester City thanks to a late penalty by Matata then to equalise in that game and well of course uh, they did follow that up then with a narrow 2-1 win away against QPR then at the Carabao Cup so hopefully it's not a 4-0 defeat here in this one lads hopefully it's a bit more of an improvement here and I tell you what lads you know they definitely are looking quite a lot more improved over the past number of games as well so I tell you what lads I'm coming into this game we're in good form at the moment I would hope there is good momentum behind this United side at the moment as well and you know what lads I'm going to say we are going to play very good here in this one I'm going to be confident we get a result here in this one Palace still haven't really kicked off so far this season hopefully they don't kick off here in this one but you know damn right they probably will end up kicking off in this one as well because I mean that just happens when they play against United I do suppose but lads I'm going to be confident here in this one I'm going to say we're going to be the better side here in this one and we'll get a massive 3-1 victory away from home here at Sellers Park I'm going to say at half time it will be 1-0 the United and Marcus Rashford will manage to get back on the score sheet for the third game in a row in this one and he will give us a 1-0 lead here going into half time I think after about 20 minutes or so the goal will come but I do believe lads we will start the second half on the back foot and Abaraki has a early enough on in the second half will manage to equalise making it 1-1 in this game but I do believe lads we shall prevail and well and our resilience will shine through here in this one Bruno Fernandes on the arm arc will make it 2-1 and then near an injury time I'm going to say the seal of victory at Joshua Xerxes will get back on the score sheet here in this one and it's going to be a massive three points then and a very good performance overall here in this one at Sellers Park so Crystal Palace 1 United 3 as we have gone with here Sellers Park definitely very well could and probably will be a lot more tighter than that however still I do believe lads we are in a very good form at the moment the momentum will carry on and I do believe that's another very good performance by Ten Hag's Reds we'll see yet another massive three points then in the Premier League now we go to Super Sunday then lads and we start off at the Amex Stadium it is Brighton hosting Nottingham Forest then well this is the very interesting game this one here and it definitely can go either way in my opinion as well Brighton surely will be the favourites of course after drawing 0-0 at home to Ipswich it definitely very well will have a big response and well beating uh, Wolves 3-2 as well in the Carver Cup midweek definitely probably has injected the goals back into the Seagulls side and well at home turf as well they should be the favourites here in this one well Nottingham Forest lads are coming off a massive 1-0 victory there away against Liverpool at Anfield. Callum hudson Odoi is a fantastic goal there. I must say, I seal him the victory there and seal him a massive three points at Anfield as well. So I'll tell you what, lads, this game definitely is quite a hard one to call here. I do believe both sides will be quite even. But will it be a great thing? Will it be a great game? I don't really think so. I think it will be quite a poor game for the most part here in this one. And in my opinion, lads, neither side is going to be separated in this game either. It will be quite a boring one-all draw here, I'm going to say, at the Amex Stadium. I'm going to say both goals will come within the about a five-minute period of each other with about 20 minutes gone in the match and Cuba Minte will manage to open the scoring here in this one giving the Seagulls the lead however that will not last too long whatsoever and I'm going to say from a corner Nikola Milenkovic will head home in this one making it 1-1 one, one. and that's all that's really going to happen here in this game quite early on in this 5 minute period and at the end here it's going to be a fair enough game in this one with a draw being the fair enough result here at the Amex Stadium so Brighton 1, Nottingham Force 1 is what I've gone with here then at the Amex Stadium
And well, Master Week 5, and we've already got the biggest game of the season. Manchester City, Arsenal, the Adial Stadium, half four on Super Sunday, lads. You cannot get any bigger than that in the Premier League this season, I don't think. Well, of course, last time these says of course, was a, it was a goalless nil-nil draw here at the Adial Stadium on Easter Sunday last year. I didn't watch the game because it was in Dublin. Watched my arm up, had done a goal in Croke Park in the Division 2 league final there. And well, thank goodness I did not, I thank goodness I did not watch this game because I tell you what, lads, from what I did here and from what I did see as well, it was the worst game of all time. Like, of course, both sides so defensive, and you know, nothing really happened in this game whatsoever. So, hopefully, it's a bit of a better game this time around. Definitely would hope for an absolute cracker of a game in this one. Well, of course, both these sides are playing midweek in the Champions League as well. Man City drew 0 0 at home to enter there. And while I'm being honest, lads, City sure to create good chances and sure enter are fantastic defensively as well, of course. And enter are one of the best teams in Europe as well. And definitely for me, would be the top five best teams in the world as well. In my opinion, they are that good but still lads I mean City definitely at home as well need to be taking advantage of teams against there and they definitely very well should be still winning the games even though Inter still are a very very good side well as a time recording of course as well Arsenal still are yet to play away against Atalanta there on Thursday night so Thursday night playing for Arsenal and well of course City will have an extra day's rest there definitely could be a big advantage there for City for sure well of course you know this game still is going to be very interesting Arsenal defensively have been very very good and they definitely very well can drown out players like Erling Haaland in this game as well well, so I do believe that City will definitely struggle to score a goal here in this game. And what I do believe that Arsenal, if they can string together good moves going forward, can definitely very well get up the City team. And I'm definitely very well could see a very shot, big shock result here in this one as well. So in my opinion, lads, although City will be the favourites in this one because they are on home turf, of course, and they probably are the better side in paper as well. I do believe lads, this game definitely is there for the taking for Arsenal, and well, especially when going forward as well. All it takes, lads, for me is one perfect move, and I do believe lads. Here, Arsenal are going to win this game in this one. But are they going to win this game in this one, lads? I do believe still. City as well will defend very, very well. And once again, lads, it will be quite of a boring game as well here in this one. But there will be a winner. There will actually be a goal here in this game. It's going to go the way of... Man City. Um, unfortunately, lads, I do believe this time around, Man City are going to take the bragging rights from this result here. 10 minutes to go in the match, I'm going to say. Erling Haaland will score the winner here in this one later on. It's going to be a very narrow 1-0 victory for Man City here in this title decider. It's going to be definitely a setback for the Gunners in this one, but still a massive three points to get City back on track in the title race. I want to tell you what, lads, it's definitely is going to set up what it could be a possible exciting title race. However, on the other hand as well, of course, City winning this game definitely very well could mean they are already on course to winning five Premier League titles in a row unfortunately. And that will end today's Premier League predictions for Match Week 5 everybody, everybody I hope you did enjoy it. Remember to like, share, subscribe, turn on notifications, comment down below lads your predictions. Remember to look for the polls and vote on the polls to compete against me and for my predictions as well. Well I'll see you all then, I'll see you all then on the next one here lads on KDFG.